Rather than working from photographs or plein air, I make these minimal sketches of the scene I want to paint. I start by masking off my paper to give the clean edges. Today we're working with a limited palette. The brand of gouache I use is Windsor & Newton. Beginning the painting, I start to add the lightest colour, which is around the horizon. I'm painting the sunset, so it always has this sort of light yellow colour just above the horizon. And I begin to move down the horizon. The paint mixing becomes intuitive after a while. And even though we're working from a basic sketch, I believe that we can absorb these colours just through observation of being able to look at what we see as we walk through the environment. For a long time I worked from photographs and I got very frustrated by my inability to capture the right colours. However, over time I've really learned how to absorb colours when I'm looking at the sunset. This is a basic blocking in stage I'm working on at the moment. And I'm just building this tonal gradation. The basic drawing of a sketch of the scene gives me the framework in which to basically put the ideas and create the atmosphere. If ever I feel lost, I refer back to that drawing. However, after some time, you find that we don't need the drawing. We tap into our imagination and our memory of how the scene looked. Gouache is a very interesting medium. I'm primarily an oil painter, but when I started to work with gouache, I realised that it had this potential of being able to both layer quickly, dry quickly, but also be reworked by adding a small amount of water. The textural elements that can be achieved through gouache are quite magical. I'm using gouache in a way that is it is not how I was taught to use it. So I was taught to use it as basically like an opaque watercolour. However, I find that if I use brushes that I would use for my oil painting and almost scumble the layers, I would get much more of a, a, an interesting effect. And this juxtaposition of both smooth and blended areas, along with these more textured scumbled areas, really gives squash these interesting characteristics. Another element of gouache for me that makes it stand out is the colour intensity. The colour intensity of gouache is second to none. It really is a, a, a magical paint. And that comes really from the binder to pigment ratio. Whereas watercolour has much more binder, gouache is highly pigmented. Building a gouache painting for me is really about creating these layers of atmosphere. The ability to work on them quickly makes it very different to oil. However, it is also very different to acrylic. Whereas acrylic dries and it sets dry, gouache has this ability to stay open. I like to use a limited palette. My palette here is quite chaotic. I'm not a clean mixer. But in my workshops, I do go step by step of how to use these colours to the best effect. The limited palette really gives us a whole scope of colour potential, but also keeps it within a harmonious range. The most important thing for me when creating paintings, whether they are in gouache or oil, is 
to really convey a sense of atmosphere and place. I'm not interested in detail so much. I'm really looking to capture this essence of the scene as if you were to just open your eyes and see it. You were transported to this place and you open your eyes and see it for the first time. When you see that, you do not focus in on detail. A camera can capture this for us. However, paint is its own medium. And I truly believe that paint has this ability to capture more of an emotional impression of a place. I take a lot of photographs if I'm out and about, but I rarely work from them. The reason for this is I believe that photography is its own language, just as paint is its own language. Any time I've tried to paint from a photograph, I end up disappointed and frustrated. Whereas if I work in this more interpretive, intuitive way, it's its own poetry, it's its own language, and clouds, the sea, the waves, can be created through the tools that we use as painters. In regards to painting on plein air, I do enjoy this a lot. I don't do it that much. I will make the small sketches on plein air, but for me, there's something about the, the experience of being in the moment. I will often go to the beach and watch the sunset, or very close to my studio here, where I get a great view of the sunset and rather than trying to interpret what I'm seeing in real time through paint the absorption of the colors through memory is such an important thing for me when I paint plein air I do get quite frustrated because I'll be mixing one color for a cloud and I'll look up and the nuance of that scene has changed. The forms have changed, the color has changed. So this is why I do tap into my memory much more. For me, gouache is just a perfect medium for capturing those memories and being able to put them down quickly and work with them, but also have enough time to go back in and rework. So here I've come to the end of what I would call stage one of the painting. I've been really working on trying to create this sense of atmosphere, going over certain areas and building it. And as I take the tape off here, it gives me those clean edges so I'm really able to see where I'm at. Stage two of the painting will be more refining really trying to tweak and build on that atmosphere more, more light, more dark, so we get a sense of where we are with it. At this point, there's no need for me to refer back to my original sketch because the painting has become its own thing. What happens now is all within the painting. So as I move on to stage two, I retape my painting and then I begin just to refine it, add more colours here and there. <laughs> 